So if this is our center, we go right six, up six, left six, down six. Then what we do, pen this guy, is we replace that R with your radius. And then I said yesterday, you'll see it two different ways. I would accept both ways. This is completely fine. But you would also often see it written as just 36. And you would, if I gave you that equation, need to realize that the radius is 6. It's the square root of that. <clears throat> All right? So that's what we simply did when your center was 0, 0. Then we went to the back page of yesterday's notes. Um, and we had it when it wasn't centered at 0, 0, which is now what 2 is saying. So it says, what if the circle is translated 3 units to the right? and then two units up. So think about what that would mean in terms of our center. So if our center was zero, zero, and we're now gonna write this new circle, all right, if we did these two things. So if the X coordinate was zero, zero, and we went three units to the right, so I'll show it on this one, but if I go one, two, three units to the right, and then two units up, one, two, my center should be now right at that red dot on here. All right, so three units to the right, two units up. So now the center should be three comma two. All right, so we're gonna write that as our center. Uh, if you would like to graph it, you can. But ultimately, and you can kind of show that here, I suppose, our center was 0, 0 on the previous one, and we go right 3, up 2. So this is our new center. But what I ultimately want is the equation of the circle. So again, if I'm giving you this one over here, this is just x squared plus y squared, and then equals whatever your radius squared is, and that would have been the 6. Once we start shifting that thing and our center is no longer 0, 0, this is when we would now have to, and again, the radius here is going to be a 6 squared. We still have the x as part of this. And then the general equation that we wrote yesterday, this will always be x minus, we called it h, and then y minus a k. It's the very last thing we wrote down in the notes yesterday. All this h is implying h is whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is so in this case it's a positive three so in that position you're going to do x minus the three then in the k k is just simply whatever the y coordinate of your vertex is in this case that k is a two so we would write y minus two squared and then this would be your equation same radius six squared you again could write this as equal to 36, okay, whichever you prefer. All right, that would be the equation of the circle that we just shifted right three up to. All right, so that's what we did yesterday. Today, we're still going to be playing off of that. We're going to add one little thing at the end. But now what I want you to do in these first couple is we're going to kind of work backwards now. Now I'm giving you the circle. And if I gave you the circle, you're going to write the equation for that circle. So give that a go there. See if we can write the equation of this first one here.
Okay, see so yeah, how we did in that first one. So a lot of us are moving along two and three already. Uh, Cody, what did you get for number for this first one here, Cody? Agree with that? Good. If you got that, that was correct. Okay. What the, the two things we have to know is our center. So when we go to find that center, what was this point, Cody? Um, uh, negative four, one. Good. So negative four comma one is the center of the circle. Our general equation is always x minus the h. H is again the x coordinate of that center. So when you do x minus the negative 4, that's why this ultimately, if we wrote that in here, becomes the x plus a4. Okay, You can also just kind of remember if my x is negative, when I plug it in, it's going to become a positive. All right, same thing with the y. The y was a1. I'm going to plug that in. The general form is y minus k, and the k is ending up just being a1. All right, so that's where he gets this from. And then you just have to identify your, your radius. One, two, three, four, five to the right. One, two, three, four, five to the left. He chose a row to write it as five squared. Um, I was walking around a few others. Again, either one of them is completely fine. We can also do five squared as simply 25. <clears throat> All right, good. All right, uh, number three, Omar. What'd you get for number three, Omar? Or number two, sorry, this guy. Good. So let's talk about the easy part first. This is one that's centered at the origin. And if it's centered at the origin, it's just straight x squared plus y squared. You don't have to worry about subtracting any other number. It's really a zero. Uh, the reason we don't have to show it, just so we understand this, this would just be x minus a zero squared. And x minus a zero squared is really nothing more than x squared. That's why we don't need to show it. And then what'd you say this was? Good. He ended up writing it as a 16 because our radius was four in every direction. And four squared is a 16. <clears throat> All right. All right. The last one of these. May or may not have this done yet. Uh, let's do this first. Uh, Mo, what was the center of the circle? Uh, seven, negative six. Yeah, I agree. So as we look at that, seven, negative six is the center. All right, that's what we're going to base our equation off of. So when we go to do this, we would have x minus, and then whatever the x coordinate of the center is, in this case, it's that 7. Square that. And then you're going to do y minus whatever the y coordinate of the center is, which is a negative 6. You're going to square that. That is, again, so the 7 was positive. It's going to look like a minus or a negative in the equation. The 6 was negative, but when we go ahead and plug that in, it ends up being the opposite positive. And then what was our radius small? Okay, so he put 9 because our radius was 1, 2, 3, and then 3 squared. <clears throat> All right. Yep. Okay, go ahead and sketch these guys now. So it's just kind of the opposite. If I give you the equation, try to sketch those. Actually, do this for me first. Do letter B first. So do letter B first. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> hey, my calculator up to show it here. <laughs> right. Working backwards for the first time. Okay, uh, letter B, the two things we need to know, first and foremost, is the center. Like, where are we basing everything off of? So, Julia, what do you think the center of this guy was? Good. If this is a minus A2, that means the X is a positive 2. If the Y is a minus 4, that means it's a positive 4. So, you should have plotted the point 2, 4. All right, so, again, the opposite of what you see within the equation. 
And then the second thing that we need to know is our radius. If this is a four, what was our radius, Julia? Good. The radius has to be the square root of that. So understand how we did this. And the reason I did this one first, because it's a nice one. I want the square root of four. That's what I, or square root of four is two. That's what I would have squared to get that four. So we go right to, up to, left to, down to, and then as best you can, you're going to circle that guy in. <clears throat> All right. All right. Now go to letter A. Do letter A. This one, uh, Joel, what is our uh, center? Zero. Good. So if it's just x squared plus y squared, that means our center is zero, zero. So that's nice. Those should be the easiest ones in terms of identifying the center. Then you get to your radius. I hear a lot of people pulling out calculators and punching stuff in into calculators and phones, and hopefully it is for this purpose. When we did this over here, the way we got this two is by taking the square root of four. That's what we would have squared to get this two. Uh, real quick, down here, you don't need to write this, but if I gave you this question down here, x squared plus y squared equals 100, what would we know the radius of that circle would have been? 10, right? And the reason we're do getting that is it's just the square root of whatever that final number is. That's what we would square, in this case, a 10 to get a 100. So when you get to this one, we still want to do that. We're trying to figure out what did I square to get a 12? And in order to do that, you would want to take its square root. So the radius of this is root 12. We should know how to simplify that. This is the whole finding two numbers that multiply to be a 12 with one of them being a perfect square. Uh, not a lot of options here. We'd settle on four and three pretty quickly. So the radius of this is going to be a two. The square root of four is going to be a two and then a root three, which is fine and well. But if I now tell you to sketch a radius of two root three, do we really know how far out we're going to go in either direction? No. So this is an instance where we probably do want to revisit and use our calculator. So if you're plugging those into the calculator, that was good. And then we will see that two root three, you're going to estimate a little bit, but it's about three and a half. So we're going to go to that center zero, zero. We're going to say that it's 3.5. And from this point, we're going to go out three and a half to the right, three and a half above to the left, to the bottom, and then we can go ahead and draw a circle in. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so with that one done, uh, C is going to play out similarly. Uh, do letter C. Uh, first, our center, Caden, uh, what do you think for the center of the circle? Good. So again, so far we're, we're perfect. If it's a positive number in the equation, so this was a positive one, that means it's a negative one within the center. 
And then if it's a negative number in our equation, that means it's the opposite is going to be a positive number for that center. So we would plot that point. So negative one, five should be right here. The radius is the square root of eight. All right, that's what we would come up with. But if you're gonna try to sketch the square root of eight, it would be nice to kind of have an idea of what that is. We, we could simplify it, but even two root two doesn't do us a lot of good. So we wanna approximate what that is. This is where your calculator would come in. So if we go ahead and plug that in, that two root two, and then you'll just do your best when we go to graph it, it should be about 2.8. So it should just be inside of three to the left, to the right, below and above. So we go. 2.8. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, but we want to be just inside of 3. 1, 2, 3 above, but just inside. And then we can draw our circle. All right. So most of that's, we're just kind of working backwards a little bit, asking you to do a little bit more, but all sort of in line with what we had done yesterday for these equations. All right, what is gonna be largely completely new is number five. All right, so definitely be able to do this. You're gonna get some homework on this tonight. You'll, you'll get a little practice on this. But if you go to number five, uh, what this is called when we're writing these equations of circles, the standard form of an equation of a circle is this guy, where I could look at this right away. And the reason this is standard, the reason we want it to look like this is I could ask you right now what our center is and you would be able to tell me that it is a negative five comma seven. And if I were to ask you what the radius is, you would be able to tell me right away that it is four. All right, that's the useful information. Not every equation would be written like this right from the beginning. So this says, can you take this standard equation? So this is the standard form and multiply out that equation. All right, so here's what this means. Instead of that X plus five squared, we want to go ahead and multiply that out. Same with the y minus 7 squared. So y minus 7 times y minus a 7. And then that's going to equal 16. So we've done the parts of this, but putting it together with these circles is, is something that's now new. So what we need to do is we need to, over here, we need to take this x and we need to distribute. We are multiplying. There are multiple terms, so that is distributing. So you're going to do x times x will give you x squared. Then you're going to take that x and multiply it by this 5, so that's going to give you 5x. Once we are completed, or once we have completed distributing with that x, now this 5 needs to get distributed. So now you're going to do 5 times x. Oops, I missed the x there. So we get another 5x. Then you have to take this 5, multiply it by the other 5, and then that's five, uh, 25. So this guy simplified, so let's go ahead and simplify this one, is x squared plus 10x plus 25. <clears throat> However, you're only halfway home because we still got to do plus. And then now we need to go to the second part. And now we do the same thing with the y's. So now I need to take my y, multiply by the other y to get a y squared. Then you take this y, multiply it by the negative 7. So that's a negative 7y. Once you have distributed that, now the negative 7 needs to get distributed. So the negative 7 times the y gives us another negative 7y. And then the negative 7 times a negative 7 gives you a positive 49. Combine your like terms there. So now I have the y squared. These two guys give us a negative 14y plus 49. And then that's that guy completely simplified. And then all of that needs to equal 16. All right, look at that. All right, then standard form then. What we are now going to do, we have some like terms that we're going to combine on the left-hand side. So I'm going to do x squared plus 10x. So I'm just dropping down this term. You're just going to rewrite this term. You're going to rewrite. You're going to rewrite these guys. Y squared minus 14y. But then we have like terms. So we're going to take these two guys. We're going to combine them together. So the 25 and the 49 added up give you 74, and then that equals 16. 
And then last but not least, notice how we have constants on both sides. So I'm going to subtract the 16 over so that all the constants are together. So when we start talking about the standard, or uh, this is what's called general form of, of a circle, we want everything set equal to a zero. So you're going to get x squared plus 10x plus y squared minus a 14y. But then we now get this 74 minus a 16, which should give you 58. <clears throat> All right. This is what we call general form. Ideally, we don't have to deal with this form. Ideally, you are in standard form. Standard form is the one we spent the first day and a half on yesterday and then the first half of today where we can just look at it, know the center and know the radius. If we look at this guy, hard to tell what our center and circle are or our center and radius are. OK, so and again, this is what's called general form. What eventually will happen, let's say you were given the general form and I now ask you for the center. If I did, you're going to say, I do not know that. So if we look at this, there's no way to know the center here. If I give you this, the radius, don't think that it's going to be some 16 or 4. Radius, we don't know. So before we can actually answer these questions, we need, now need to take this version and put it into standard form. All right. And this is the big one. This is what you'll have to do most often. It's an old idea uh, that we're going to be doing. What, what I want you to do, notice how you have an x squared here and a negative 6x there. I want you to write those consecutively. So put x squared first, then do your minus 6x. All right, then notice you have y's that are common or common y terms. You have a y squared and a positive 20y. So put those in order. So I'm going to put plus y squared plus 20y and then minus the 16. So we just rearrange, basically. We just move things around. And then now, let's see what we remember of this. A very long time ago. This is very much first semester stuff. Remember how we would take this guy right here, x squared minus 6x. And then we would leave a little blank here. And I would ask you, what would we need to add to this? Oops, erase that to this location right here to make a perfect square. So remember when we were drawing all those little squares and we were trying to make it a perfect square? All right, I think way back, October, November. Uh, here's how we did that. If you need the square, you're more than welcome to do it. Hopefully after you see one or two, we can jump right to this with a little shortcut. Uh, this was always our x squared, and we always got that by taking x and multiplying it by an x. We talked about if this is a square, then this length and this height have to be the same. So if I had six X's total, that means three of those had to go right here and three of those had to go right here so that I get X minus three, X minus a three. Then it's a square. Same thing for the length, same thing for your height. To make a perfect square, what would this bottom right hand corner have to be? Remember that? Well, yeah, that would have to be a 9, the negative 3 and a negative 3. So what we're going to add here is a positive 9. Now, keep in mind, whenever we would just add this number out of nowhere to create a perfect square, remember how we would subtract 9? We still need to do that. So where we're going to do that, we have this little negative 16 in the back. We want to subtract... Um, I'm going to put it underneath just so we can kind of understand. We want to subtract a negative 25 there. Or not 25, sorry. Negative 9 there, which will be ultimately give us a negative 25. So if I add a random 9 out of thin air here, I need to subtract it away elsewhere so we haven't changed the problem. Okay? Now, not done, because now we have to do the same thing with our y's. Now I have y squared plus 20y. So now, see if you do remember this. You can draw the square if you want down here. What number do I need to add right here if I had a y squared, a 20y, to make this a perfect square? Don't say it. See if you remember how to get it.
Okay, I'm pretty confident in that number. What would have made this a perfect square if we did that? Brave. Well, you're warm, Omar. Yeah, 10 squared. So this would have to be a 100. Okay. Good. So if you added that 100, that is correct. But then again, we just created that out of nowhere, right? That was not a part of the original problem. So if I'm going to add this random 100 out of middle of nowhere, I'm going to have to subtract. So instead of adding it, I'm going to subtract it from this negative 16 as well. All right. Uh, let me again show this. Again, this is very, very valid. Don't worry about if you need to do this. This had to have been y times y to get this y squared. And if it's a square and I had 20 y's, that means I needed to split those up evenly with 10 y here, 10 y here. And then those 10s together give us that 100. All right, so now let's clean this up a little bit. I am going to rewrite this expression as this perfect square. So doesn't this just become x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is x minus 3 squared? Then I am going to add that. So we had a plus sign between all the x's and y's. So I'm going to do plus. And then now I'm going to rewrite all of this here all the y stuff instead of y squared plus 20y plus 100, didn't I just have y plus 10 times y plus 10? So I will write this as y plus 10 squared. And then finally, now we're going to combine all of these constants. So if I had a negative 16 minus a 9 minus a 100, that would give me a negative 125. Let's talk about what we do now know. Initially, when I asked you what the center was, you wouldn't have been able to tell me the center. Can we now look at that and determine what the center of the circle would be? Yeah, this is 3, negative 10. So it is nice if we can put it into standard form because now I know that our center is 3 and then negative 10. The radius we sort of know. Uh, we should know that in standard form, we really want this guy to be on the other side. So we want to move him to the other side over here. We would do that by just adding 125 to both sides. And then this should now look like every equation that we had dealt with up until this problem. So that if I asked you the center, which we already talked about, we would look at this right away. Know the center is 3, negative 10. And now that we have that 125 over there, we should know that the radius is the square root of 125. Um, then if I had asked you to graph that, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. You would have to graph that with a radius of about 11, so 11.2. All right. <clears throat> so it's a review of what we did last semester. It's a very, very long time ago but it is kind of the same stuff so that we can put this in the standard form, <clears throat> okay? And there'll be a couple of those on the homework tonight. <clears throat> All right, we'll see how those go. Okay, we'll get that. All right, when you get this, uh, I'll write it on the board. You're not gonna do all of these. I'll tell you which couple we're not gonna worry about. missing How did that happen? Um, you are not if you go to the back page <coughs> did I de delete them already cross out 5b and 5c okay we're not going to do those right now a and d i'd like you to give those an attempt those are the ones that we just finished with uh, b and c we're going to punt on for a little bit all right but then the rest of those you'll do all right <coughs> I don't remember deleting this. No, that's really weird. Can I give it a second? Yeah. 